Hello. Uh, in macroeconomics, you'll have seen diagrams like this. This is an ADAS diagram. And uh, you can see here that uh, this economy is at equilibrium here. It's got a price level of something like P2. And it's not far off, but it isn't at the full employment level of output, YF, which is the maximum that can be produced in this economy. Now, one of the policies that governments have at their disposal is fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is when a government uh, changes its level of spending, G. G is a component of aggregate demand. Remember, the components of AD are C, consumption, I, investment, G, government spending, and the difference between export and import spending, X minus M. So fiscal policy is a policy where the government has the ability, uh, uh, goes ahead and, and manipulates its level of government spending or its level of taxation with the intention of manipulating the position of the aggregate demand curve. Now, imagine that a government is looking at its economy and it believes this is a true picture of its economy, and it is here. Ceteris paribus, that means all other things being equal, what would it want to do with its fiscal policy? Perhaps this government is worried that output is below the full employment level. That must mean unemployment or underemployment. So, to solve that unemployment, if that's important to that government, they will want to boost aggregate demand. They will want to shift the aggregate demand outwards, perhaps somewhere like there, and they will get a new equilibrium point and much, be much, much closer to the, to, the, to the full employment level of output. Of course, the trade-off is higher prices. It appears to be higher prices. You want to cut unemployment, you've got to suffer inflation and higher prices. That's the Phillips curve, by the way, simple Phillips curve. If the government wanted to do that, if they decided, yes, it's worth suffering higher prices to get those last unemployed people into work and to shift the AD curve outwards and move us from point A to point B, and it wanted to use fiscal policy to do that, what would it do? It could either raise G, it could spend more. By raising G, G is a component of AD, and by raising G, it raises AD, and AD shifts outwards. Or it could cut tax. By cutting taxes like income tax, consumers would have more money left over in their pockets, uh, disposable income would rise, and therefore they could go out and spend some of that disposable income, and C, another component, the major component of aggregate demand, would arise. So by cutting tax or raising government spending, they could achieve that outward shift in aggregate demand. If, on the other hand, they didn't like this price level and they wanted to reduce aggregate demand to, say, AD3, um, and to take the economy back to here and to suffer some unemployment, uh, the difference between Y2 and YF would be unemployment, uh, but have prices nice and low at P1, control inflation, well, then they would do the opposite. They would cut government spending and they would raise tax. And this would limit the components of aggregate demand. If they cut government spending, then G falls, and that's one of the components of AD, so AD falls. And if they uh, raise tax, it reduces the, the, the spending power of consumers, and that will reduce consumption. And, and so that would lower AD. But here's something else to think about. Let me get my board rubber. I want to look briefly at the multiplier effect, because the multiplier effect is this. The multiplier effect states that when one of the components of aggregate demand is changed, the final impact on aggregate demand will be greater than the initial impact on that component. Let me show you. I'm going to rub this out. We said that aggregate demand, aggregate demand, AD, is C and I and G and X minus M. Okay? Well, if the government wants to boost aggregate demand, let's say it feels it needs to boost aggregate demand by 10 billion. The target for the government fiscal policy is an increase of 10 billion pounds. So this government decides, right, well, uh, without raising extra tax, um, we're, we're going to increase our spending. We're going to increase G by 10 billion. They're going to overshoot the mark because of the multiplier effect. If G goes up by 10 billion 
plan. Where does it go? It might be spending on education, they might be building new schools, they might be employing previously unemployed teachers, they might be paying publishing companies to print new textbooks, or, or computer companies to fit schools with, with computers. Or they might spend it on healthcare, and they might build new hospitals, or buy new machines, or give doctors a pay rise, or give nurses a pay rise, or just employ more doctors and nurses. Wherever they spend the 10 billion, it doesn't stop there. Let's take one of those examples I just listed. Let's say that the, the, uh, the government um, decides to spend 10 billion by giving doctors in the public health care service, the NHS in the UK, a pay rise, a big pay rise for all doctors that, that comes to 10 billion a year. Well, those doctors are going to say thank you very much and they are going to have more money. But they're going to go out and spend it. They're going to go out and spend it in restaurants, they're going to spend it in clothes shops, they're going to buy more furniture for the house. And so G may have risen by 10 billion, but that money reverberates around the economy uh, from the doctor's pockets, if it went to the doctors, and consumption will rise. And then all the places where the doctors were spending extra money, the clothes shops, the restaurants, the, the, the furniture shops, so, they take on extra workers. And then other people get jobs, and those people have money to spend. Of course, some of the money will be saved. The doctors won't spend everything they get. And some of the money will leak abroad. They might go, uh, go on holiday abroad, or they might spend extra money on uh, foreign farmhouses in France and things like that. And the money leaks abroad. Um, and so the minus imports part goes up, and that reduces AD. But overall, Keynes said that this multiplier effect, difficult to calculate, the size, difficult to calculate the, the speed at which this occurs, and it will be different uh, if, if the government spends it on doctor's wages as opposed to spending it on a tr construction company to build a new motorway, which will probably be very slow. Depending on how the government spends its money, it, it's difficult to, to calculate the exact size and speed of this multiplier effect, but it will occur. And that's why it's difficult for governments to finesse the aggregate demand curve. So if I go back, I go back quickly to this aggregate demand curve. There's the AD curve, there's the LRAS, here's the price level, we're here, we're close to YF, they want to reach AD2, but it's very difficult to finesse that, to get it exactly right, because of this unknown multiplier effect, it's difficult for them to be spot on and to lift the AD curve to exactly the point they want it. They very well might overshoot and they start getting serious inflation, um, and if they try and underplay it, they might not get the effect they wanted, they might get less than the effect. If they anticipate a multiplier effect uh, greater than truly happens, again, okay, it's very difficult. So it's very difficult for governments to, to, to manage aggregate demand. Demand management policies, like fiscal policies, are very difficult. Now, I looked at the case where they're trying to raise G. I didn't talk so much about them cutting tax, but the same thing occurs. Um, very difficult to estimate when you leave people with more money in their pockets because you've cut tax, how much of that they'll spend, how much of it will stay in the economy, how much of it will, will reverberate around the economy, how quickly that will happen. It's all very, very uh, inaccurate. And therefore, demand management policies, such as fiscal policy, by governments is extremely uh, imprecise. Okay, some ideas about fiscal policy and the multiplier effect for you.